gracious hosts, unique lodging, and tasty cuisine. New Mexico bed and breakfasts are New Mexico true. Our innkeepers are as special as New Mexico, and we're sharing their stories. Read about them and plan your trip at nmbba.org. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Big Blend Radio, second Thursday New Mexico show. We love to focus on New Mexico. It is just one of those unique states in our country. And on the show, we always talk about travel. We talk about food, events, lodgings. And um, of course, we're going to talk about lodgings because this is our show with the New Mexico Bed and Breakfast Association. And let me tell you, Nancy and I travel the country full time. And a lot of times we're pet sitting, but a lot of times if we're staying somewhere. It's going to be an independent hotel majority of the time or a bed and breakfast. And we stayed in over 30 in two years. So seriously, we, we love our bed and breakfast. The innkeepers know their surroundings so well. And they are like your visitor, you know, their, your visitor guide, your travel guide when you go there. Um, so anyone if going to New Mexico, go to this website, NM bba.org that stands for the new mexico bed and breakfast association and we do this show every second thursday so you can keep up with us at bigblendradio.com but today because it's fall we're going to be looking ahead to winter because so you have some time to plan we're going to talk about winter in new mexico and we've got two awesome innkeepers joining us we have darlene capshaw she was on our show a few months ago in the summer she is from red horse bed and breakfast which is a actual working farm in albuquerque new mexico and yeah. i encourage you to go to her website redhorsebnb.com welcome back darlene how are you i am doing great enjoying Good to the have I know it's fall season, but getting into winter, and I think winters are really, it, see, I think a lot of people may think New Mexico is like, you know, when we lived in Arizona, everyone thought we lived like in the Sahara Desert with some gumby cactus. Mm -hmm. I think that a lot of people may think that about New Mexico, and we'll be surprised to find out how diverse this beautiful land of enchantment is, you know, in regards to there's snow, there's desert, there's a little bit of everything. So mm -hmm. glad to have you on the show. And also, Welcome Ryan Miller, uh, he and his wife are on the Bobcat Inn. Now we love the name, right? We, mm -hmm. gotta, we love Bobcats. It's an Adobe Pueblo style lodging destination in Santa Fe. And I encourage you to go to their website, bobcatin.com. Welcome to the show, Ryan, how are you? Thank you, I appreciate it, Lisa. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to talking to everybody. Yeah, and your inn looks beautiful. In fact, it you've really already got does. the fall colors with it being Adobe, right? <laughs> definitely, <laughs> definitely, we're ready. It, that's cool. I always say that about New Mexico. You always have those blue skies, and then you've got all the different colors of earth. You know, like the you know dirt. You've got red dirt in some areas. You've got the pueblo. So I think you guys actually have fall year round in a way. I know it gets skies warm. never disappoint here in New Mexico. Oh man! Mm -hmm. Now, Ryan, are you from New Mexico? No, I'm originally from Pennsylvania, and I moved out to New oh, Mexico oh. about twelve years ago. Ah, so what drew you there to New Mexico? Just the uh, the climate, the people, the culture, um, getting away from humidity from back on the East Coast and <laughs> getting immersed in the more, uh, the culture here in New Mexico and then specifically Santa Fe is just a much better way of life to us than it is, uh, than it was for us before. I just want to say we're talking about winter, okay, so when you compare Pennsylvania winters to Santa Fe, um, when you see snow and it's that dusting, you don't really worry about oh, the shovel and the blowers here. and the, it's, yeah. Yeah, snow is nothing here. It's gone by 5 p.m. usually. And when it does stay, it's gone within a day or two, but it's just beautiful and makes the uh, mountains just look amazing. Oh man. Mm. And you know what nice. I love is, I, I know Albuquerque, you have the Pueblos too. And uh, you know, there's something about winter in the Southwest and New Mexico, you guys really do it well, is having those luminarias all lit up. Does that oh, happen in Albuquerque, so awesome. Darlene? It does. It's a tradition at Christmas time and uh, they take bus tours. The city organizes bus tours through it and you can walk as well. That's really a nice way to see it. But Old Town and a lot of the more historic neighborhoods do that. And then we support a lot of a lot of businesses support the scouts who will come and set them up for you. And it's just nice. we'll light them on Christmas Eve and then again on New Year's Eve. And a lot of oh, and we should say luminaries, they're like they're candles. 
in like a little baggy thing. Are. And, and they're known by two different names. So there's the farolitos, oh. which really are the bags with the sand and the candle. Then we also call them luminarias, but then the tradition of the luminaria is really more like a little mini bonfire. So um, oh. they're interchangeable. People know what you're talking mm -hmm. about when you ask about them. So they're beautiful. Uh -huh. Do you, you, you have those in Santa Fe, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you want to see a real Luminaria bonfire, come to the New Year's Eve celebration in Santa Fe. We actually have them all around the plaza for New Year's Eve. And that's the real traditional Luminaria, right. which are the little bonfires. But outside of New Mexico, they're known as Luminarias <laughs> in general. Yeah. Hmm. And then all the businesses like the hospitals and places, they have the electric Luminarias up on top. I think that's kind of cheating a little bit, but it's still beautiful. <laughs> Hey, this is cool though. <laughs> well, but this is what's interesting about New Mexico and, and the culture. I mean, it's such diverse culture, Spanish, you got Mexican, you got Native American, you've got settlers, you've got everybody in there, right? But when you think about like, there's a day of the dead ceremonies too, which I know in Tucson, when we lived there, that was, you know, people would look at us like, what are you doing celebrating death? I'm like, cause it's cool. Like it's, it's, <laughs> no, I didn't mean it that way. And that sounded terrible. But it's, it's because cool. you are celebrating life. It, it's a beautiful, um, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful way to remember. I mean, and we've been in parades where, I mean, and just, uh, you call it ofrendas? Uh, am I going to say where I'm going to get myself in trouble? I shouldn't even Afredo. say anything. Well, to save you from that, one of the things. Thank you. <laughs> and, and I'm sure you had it in Tucson too, is the Posada. It's the mm. pilgrimage going from house to house the nine days mm. before Christmas. And, and you're celebrating family and you're celebrating life and you're celebrating light and, and food. And, and that's really a beautiful cultural, new, it's I think mostly New Mexican, but other mm -hmm. Hispanic communities, Mexican, Spanish communities will have that as well. Mm -hmm. But that's a really neat way to celebrate life also. Mm. Mm -hmm. well, nice. Do you have any celebrations that happen like, you know, with that in Santa Fe? Yes, um, we have the Canyon Road uh, Farolito walk. Um, and that's a walk up Canyon Road that's done on Christmas Eve. And that's uh, really beautiful. Mm -hmm. You can stop in galleries, get some nice hot cider as you're walking up. It's just mobbed with uh, tons and tons of people. And uh, it's, it's but it's beautiful. But then we have one that's a little off the beaten path in Pecos, New Mexico, about 15 minutes, right. 20 minutes south. That's the La Posadas and Farolito walk. And uh, they they walk and there's probably three to four thousand Farolitos on the walk. Wow. And it goes to the chapel at the um, in Pecos, right near the Pecos National Monument. And uh, it's kind of fun. And it's just to represent the journey of uh, of our wise men and for Joseph and Mary getting to uh, Bethlehem and seeking shelter. That's what uh, it's it's really cool. It's really pretty. A lot less people there. They have the true reenactment of donkeys and everything like that it's just not quite as mob oh. as uh, downtown and we've had a lot of guests that have went to it and just loved it it is a little bit of a walk but they just loved it just because it was a little more quiet and it's in the middle of like the woods and you can have nice. fun you're not you know you don't have the traffic and uh, but canyon road i can't discount that i mean some of these galleries put on amazing light shows some of them have laser light shows on canyon road for the walk and so on we i mean we have farolitos everywhere in town just like just like albuquerque does and um taos does it up amazingly too you know you drive up in taos at christmas time and there's just it's beautiful driving up there at night um in even las vegas new mexico has beautiful um farolitos all over the place and i agree it's it might might be a little cheating to have the electric but it's so pretty to see them on top of all the big buildings and uh yeah in the hospital, the, the hospitals all, all over New Mexico, the hospitals do it right. They just, they all just go all out and their whole building, all their buildings are just lined with it. And it's just beautiful. And then wow. in Santa Fe, and I'm pretty sure in Albuquerque, from what I've seen, just the, uh, all the state government, local government buildings do it. It's just something we, we do up well in New Mexico. Cool. Yeah. It's easy nice. to do because with all of the Adobe style buildings that have the flat roofs and what's mm. easy with all the different mm. layers years of flat roofs and so it's it, it's just so natural and it's pretty and it's not the commercial bright neon light in your face you can I think really um just sit, let it sink in more mm. that's part of the nature of New Mexico I, it, I think Ryan you'd agree that it's it's oh, just yeah. their life and it's it's just beautiful and and you get to actually enjoy what you're surrounded by 
Oh, I think the light, and then when you have snow, it's really magic, you know, to have a little snow with the luminarias. See, oh, I'm still not saying it right. I'll get there. <laughs> I obviously need to come back. And even though I was thinking about the Day of the Dead, that's still a fall thing. I'm still stuck in fall, but we'll yeah. get there. We'll get there. Well, you know, just the, go ahead, Brian. Uh, oh, I was going to say, on the Day of the Dead, uh, no, uh, supposed to be this year, but next for sure next year, Santa Fe is going to have the first uh, Dea, Dea de los Muertos uh, celebration on the plaza with a glow parade and everything like that. Um, oh, cool. We're planning on doing it this year, but it looks like it's going to start next year. And um, so that's going to be done up really cool. And that's going to be right around Halloween. But uh, that'll be the kickoff for the holidays here. Cool. Oh, well, good wow. planning for Go the future. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. I want to touch a little bit on, on both of your your ends. Darlene, you've been on the show before, but you're an actual working farm, which I think is a very unique thing for people to stay at a bed and breakfast that is a working farm. So you know you wake up to cockadoodle doo in the morning, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yep. Eggs that's from good. the chickens, vegetables that come out of the garden, fruit. Right now we're serving our grape juice that we're pressing and our apples and wow. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's a delicious experience, of course, but it's, a, you know, but Christmas is so much fun when you're talking about food, when you go towards the holidays and, and there are the foods in New Mexico, I'm sure Ryan's also going to bring up that are traditional. But for us, because we're a farm, we're also very much on a heritage farm, even though I was born here in New Mexico, the my heritage is Swedish and German. And so my one daughter makes St. Lucia buns for Christmas. And that's the recipe yep. I'll share with you. And it's cool. uh the, talk about light the girl comes in with candles on her head and she brings the buns to the parents and for christmas morning nice. and that's a neat tradition so we do mm. a lot of we weave a lot of our heritage into our new mexico um home and we and we make german beer ox and that's a part of our foods uh cool. our main for christmas is our lights uh, we're a little southwestern mini biltmore in the sense that <laughs> in every room that's and awesome we do a white christmas celebration a reenactment mm -hmm. and people come dressed up as their favorite character and at, at the end this is at the end yeah this mm -hmm. is so cool now do you that's like awesome. so what happens at the actual you know the the garden itself are you do you preserve things throughout the year so in winter you have all the yummies yep we've canned up carrots and bell peppers and jams and jellies and syrups and Ooh. and corn wow. and, yeah well, just about everything that we can can we do we'll do potatoes and, <laughs> yeah everything we can can uh we can, can. <laughs> in large large jars that are concentrate so that we can reconstitute it all winter if it's a juice um we normally wow. we just made relish right now i have sauerkraut fermenting oh I hope wow we're going to find out in two weeks. <laughs> oh, wow. It might become chicken food. I don't know yet. Uh, well, that's, that's always uh -huh. the, the, the thing. Hey, chickens do eat just about everything I'm learning. <laughs> yeah, except they don't like citrus. They, yeah, they like tomatoes. Yeah. In fact, I saw them fight and chase each other over tomatoes. Oh, that's so funny. Just, you know, we're, by the way, we're all on a farm right now. That's what I'm talking about. It. But I keep thinking about mm -hmm. you all because we've been harvesting peppers and playing with peppers and, and learning now, not to rub you your mean, eyes. Do you mean bell peppers or chili No, peppers? no. Uh, cayenne and serrano mm -hmm. and frisco mm -hmm. and jalapeno. And, oh. um, it, and it's this balance of like when to pick them you know do and then dry them and so i've been learning how to do all of that and that's a it's it's cool to learn and um just don't rub your eyes do not rub that's your right. eyes even if you just pet a cat you don't rub your eyes you do not do it um it does hurt but it, it's so cool because we've been talking about new mexico food this is the danger about this monthly show with you guys at the new mexico bed and breakfast association as we walk around absolutely drooling and hungry you know during and after so but that's fine uh ryan let's go over to you in santa fe with your inn uh so it's pueblo style i mean this is how many rooms do you have because all i just got all stuck in your photos i'm like we need to go check this out so we have eight rooms um mm. and we have six in our main inn and we have two in our casita and the casita's on site here and uh you got by the way you guys have to get some hatch chili uh seeds to grow some hatch chilies next year okay <laughs> <laughs> and we got to send you some hatch chilies but um i feel i feel like i uh i i do i could do a lot more in a day with um 
and to all of the stuff that Darlene does here. But uh, <laughs> I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm amazingly She's impressed. She's a workhorse. I didn't uh, she mean it. Is I, mean, I, had to. I need internet help though. <laughs> uh, Darlene, yeah, Darlene has always her. amazed me. That's oh, every time I've met her, but um, I'm actually a beekeeper. So, and my wife oh. is a beekeeper in training and um, we have 25 beehives uh, surrounding wow. the, uh, some of the property. So we do um, for, we do harvest our own honey. We have about 200 gallons or 200 pounds that need to be uh, extracted right now. And probably about another hundred that's going to be coming. Wow. Uh, the name of our, uh, of our honey of our honey is called 7k honey because we're at 7,300 feet here. So uh, we do use the honey in our, um, in our cooking all year round. Um, we also use honey from other beekeepers in the area that has different flavors because I like to infuse different honeys in, uh, in, in different uh, dishes that we make here. Uh, like in the holidays, we make a lot of um, we make a lot of dishes that would make sense for the holidays, like uh, cranberry French toast. Um, yeah. Some other casseroles that lend themselves to the holidays. I come from uh, more English, but I've cooked a lot of um, Pennsylvania Dutch, which is German food. So I bring a lot of influences in my cooking from that that um little little things here and there that you don't you don't see and um but everybody's always got fresh baked goods we have a um, professional baker uh on the property my father-in-law is a professional baker of 40 years wow. 40 plus years so he bakes every day for the inn um bakes wow. the before. so everybody's got fresh baked pastries and breads and I'm glad I eat gluten free because I would be about three times the size you'd have to roll me out the door if I because uh, I do have a sweet <laughs> Yeah, and yeah, um know, but we do so um it's uh, the, his breads and pastries and all his uh baked goods are just amazing he makes scones and um yeah. make biscuitos um biscuitos are steak cookie i'm sure you guys have biscuitos mm -hmm. down the horse um biscuitos are the steak cookie of new mexico it's a butter cookie with cinnamon and uh and yeah it's, they're Ooh. good it's good yeah. and then um and then we de we decorate the end we have lights we have lights and a lot of different trees throughout the um, throughout the property because we, we have a we have a you know a little bit bigger property than most uh, B and B's in the Santa Fe area. Um, so we have um, trees throughout the property that we have lights in and little lights here, little lights there. We have tin tin uh, the tall tin trees, the hand punched tin oh, trees. Oh, that's right, because of all Mexico. the tin in New Mexico too, like the Milagros yeah. and all so of we, yeah. So we have those and, um, you know, we, we, we decorate it up. Right. And, uh, we even do the elf on the shelf for the kids because you, you gotta have a little something for the kids. Okay. Wait, you said yeah. kids. And then I noticed, listen, that you guys are pet, you're pet friendly, which is rare to find at so a better breakfast, friendly. but you have pet, you have like a, we have, we have, have a, own a shelter going on. <laughs> you don't get all of dogs. We're, like, we're, we're foster failures, uh, so to speak. <laughs> so, um, we have, we have dogs, almost all of them are black. That's a, we have a weak spot for black dogs and the whole black dog syndrome. Um, but we, um, we are pet friendly. Uh, most of our rooms, except for one hallway that's hypoallergenic for people. Um, all the rooms are pet friendly, um, dogs specifically. I'm actually allergic to cats, but um dogs and um and we're kid friendly for kids above like six because we do have a five foot um koi pond with a waterfall on the property and we don't want little kids oh wow nice wandering off there but um Ooh. it's uh it, it's really fun christmas is always fun here because everybody's just going to all these different events and doing all different things and uh and i get a little more creative i'm the one that does the cooking every day and uh i get a little more creative with uh with food during the uh, holidays and uh, i try to bring in some of my some of my cooking background but i also try to stay true to all the new mexico uh culinary needs and wants and culinary stuff and uh I wish we had a garden and everything like that, but we have a lot of wildlife here that would just eat the crap out of everything. <laughs> but you have bees, and I wanted to touch uh, touch on the bees real quick because yeah. I know there's listeners that may go, "Oh my God, I'm going to get attacked by bees if I go to the inn." And so oh. I really thought I should touch on that because, well, no, you know what I mean. They're, that people go, oh, "I'm allergic to a bee sting," or "Can I get?" And we've stayed on farms, you know, as we travel and do B and Bs too. That have it. Nancy's allergic to bees, and right now we have bee boxes all over and surrounding yeah. us and, and we're fine so I, I just wanted to bring that up that I want people to know they're okay yeah this is my seventh year of beekeeping I get stung a couple times a year just because I'm in hives but I mean I'm in hives every week and I get stung a couple times a year but I'm in them but 
I never get mm-hmm. stung when I'm more than 10 feet away from the hives. The bees, there's nothing for them to really go after near the inn and our areas where all the guests are. So bees just, they, they just, they, 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 they don't, just, they're not really social animals with people. They're social with themselves. So yeah, they're not, <laughs> they're not really aggressive. Like when we lived in Africa, those bees were a little tiny bit aggressive. They're Compared, Africanized bees. Yeah. yeah. Africanized bees are the most aggressive, one of the most aggressive yeah. in the world. They that they were something like, uh oh, you're in trouble. But here, you know, you, I can walk by these hives. I just don't go like oh. close to them because I'm not stupid, you know. I mean like, just for example, and I'm gonna talk about Albuquerque for here for a minute, Darlene, but mm-hmm. Las Cabanas has several beehives on the property. And they have a bee house where you can go in and get relaxation therapy with bees all surrounding you, it, not in no the way. room. But wow. their bees are closer to their public area at Las Cabanas. And I've been there a couple of times and I've, I've the most I've seen is bees foraging on lavender flowers. So, you know, mm-hmm. it, so bees really are, they're really social animals and people just mistake be hornets and wasps for bees it's two different you know hornets and wasps flies and flies and bees that's and the other flies thing. yeah yeah sure. and there's a lot of flies that look like bees and vice versa and we've yeah. done this well because we're on a whole thing we need to take care of our bees across this country oh, especially yeah. for farmers you know bees Absolutely. are everything for our food yes. source and and fl- flower we i mean eat them like uh, if i will have a bee show just now so i'll stop but <laughs> yeah no, 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 but I mean, was a beekeeper I, I go, I mean, I photograph all of them. And one time, I mean, all half of what I thought I was photographing, I thought they were bees. No, they're flies or this. And then <laughs> where's our native bees? And the, I mean, it just, it, it's a very, it's a whole other show and we've done them and, mm-hmm. and I, I geek out of them, but it's so cool to do. They're and cool. I think it's you having them on the property is important so people understand the importance of bees and having them and mm-hmm. um, also it, localized honey is so good for you too so Darlene mm-hmm. do you have bees we did and you know it's really important for the pollinating of our fruit in our gardens we absolutely, absolutely. need them. sometimes they mess up and they pollinate something with something else and just go oh I thought that was a cantaloupe but, <laughs> no, um, that's for sure so we had bees and we had a, a year of honey and then our goats found the bee boxes oh. and had oh, destroyed no them during way. the winter. And so we lost all our bees. But oh. right across the ditch from us is a Catholic church. And that's what they do. They raise sheep and sell wool and they sell honey. Um, so they they have lots of bees. And, and we will go back to having bees, but not until we figure out a way to keep our little goats in their own little pen. Oh, good goats luck are, with that. Goats are fun. I mean, they're goats ingenious. They're like, they, they, find a way. <laughs> they find a way to get out always. I mean, yeah, they really yeah. are like little two-year-olds that just, oh yeah, let's try this. Yeah, yeah we might have to make a trade, Ryan. <laughs> yes, definitely, definitely. <laughs> we do. Our, the only other gardening thing we do is we do, we have a lot of planting, a lot of beds around the inn and everything, but we do have a hundred, a hundred plant lavender garden here. So we have, small, we have a small yes. lavender garden and uh, we're planning to this year make uh, some lavender oils out of it and stuff like that. Nice. So you know, lavender is a lot of fun too. So. We went to the botanical garden actually in Albuquerque. We've been to the botanical garden in spring, early spring, and it, it was beautiful. And we went to the Santa Fe botanical garden. And it's a small garden, but I mean, you wouldn't believe what can grow. I mean, that's that's what's so amazing mm-hmm. when you see what can grow in high altitudes. And um, it's am- and you've got okay, you you've got Petroglyph National Monument outside your doorstep, Darlene. You've got mm-hmm. Santa Fe National Forest outside your doorstep, Brian. Um, mm-hmm. What happens? In, I want to go see the petroglyphs in the snow. I want to see that. That would be well. That awesome. you would have to be very careful and catch it at the right time. <laughs> yeah. Out- Turkey doesn't get that much snow. I mean, the Sandia Mountains do. As we would go skiing, and on the way down, shed your clothes so that when you get home, you're in your shorts. Because, <laughs> really? Yeah. Um, because you need you'd be up there skiing, but then by the time you get home, you're going to barbecue it, literally in your shorts and t-shirt. It can be that warm. When we we do get snow, I have pictures I'm going to send you where there's a foot of snow on our patio, but. Like Ryan said, once the sun comes out, you know, we're high altitude and intense sun. And once it comes out, it melts. It doesn't stay mm. cold enough, long enough. Now, Santa Fe, I think, gets more snow than we do, of course. You're a couple thousand feet higher, but um, mm. it goes away so quickly. 
You have to run out there and enjoy it right then. We'd get our kids up in the morning and before school and put their only snowsuit on and just stuff them in it and send them out there so they could see snow before it melted because it'd be mm. melting as they go to school. And it's a snow and you're not allowed to grow because you only get to see it once a year. <laughs> it is, but you know something I thought there. about when you said about uh, growing things and you mentioned it again is that New Mexico really should have a little extra theme called uh, just add water. <laughs> You know, because all of a sudden we'll get a little bit, a tiny drop of rain, and then the weeds just like oh, come yeah. around that you didn't know had a seed in it. I, I think it's the same for you, wouldn't it be? Ryan? Oh yeah, stuff we we got the the fire hydrant opened in like second or third week in June this year, and everything grew like a foot overnight. And it's like things were growing, they were growing slow, like it's things that are ir like gar garden beds that are irrigated, and then just everything just went boom. And now, I mean, most most plants, flowers, and everything. We've had so much rain this year. Just That's like awesome, though. You needed it. Things are taller than me. I mean. Well, <laughs> well, you need it for the tumbleweeds. Oh, for you sure. You have to see the picture, Lisa and Nancy. It's, and I, Ryan, I'm sure you've seen it. On our I-25, or I-40. No, yeah, I-40 during the holidays. There's a huge, giant snowman that they put on the freeway. And it's actually oh. tumbleweeds that they've spray painted white and put a hat on it and made a snowman. Out of. I drive wow. past that every year purposely because I think that's so cool down there. And that's very you know, cool. Talking about temperature, it's so weird. You can have, we could have snow on the ground up here in Santa Fe. You drive down to Albuquerque, you need to have a short sleeve shirt that day that's in it. January. That's that's mm -hmm. crazy. So can people get to you easily? That's something when you think about, you know, it's so funny because we're used to being in the mm -hmm. Southwest and, you know, in that portion of the country. And then we went to the Midwest in December and learned when the snow, co <laughs> snow comes and the sun comes yeah. out, the sun doesn't melt the snow. It creates ice. And so you do need to start shoveling and you, you must have toddies. It's the only way to survive winter <laughs> up in those. You know about that being in Pennsylvania. You This mm -hmm. is not the same beast and so <laughs> and then it starts like as we travel we're like okay it, i mean can we get there can we physically get to the destination and are we going to freeze going there because there's times you even pull over at a rest area and you don't even want to get out of your car you're like you know sometimes you just sometimes you, know, you can't you, it's like i don't want to do it <laughs> so i'm just saying everybody go to the southwest at this time of year go to new mexico it's a good time because you can get there pretty easily to santa fe and Albu uh, albuquerque i know you're you're easy, but Santa Fe, yeah, you're pretty easy to get to, right? No problem. And so, I mean, I know, Darlene, you're really close to the airport in Albuquerque. And, um, you know, Santa Fe, Albuquerque Airport is less than an hour from our end. And uh, we also have an airport in Santa Fe that's 15, 20 minutes away from our end. And mm. there's probably about seven or eight flights that come in a day, but they're getting ready to do a pretty big renovation to the Santa Fe airport here soon. Mm to uh, make it bigger, um, but not a problem. And always the car rental companies always recommend a four wheel drive car. It's not really necessary even in Santa Fe, but you know, they got to do their upsells somewhere. Um, yeah. but, <laughs> but if they want to go up into the mountain, yeah, they would, and go to some of the ski areas, um, yeah. they probably would want something like that. It's New Mexico really is an all season state because even a lot of the activities you do in the summertime, you can still do in the wintertime. Oh, sure. mm. They're not as crowded and they're not as hot, mm. <laughs> but you yeah. can still, it, it's a state where it doesn't close down like up North. I would, mm -hmm. where and my husband you lived could, up in Boston and was different. You could ski yeah. in, Taos, in the morning, you could start yeah. skiing in Taos. You can come to Santa Fe for lunch, stroll around the plaza and you can finish off your day in Albuquerque and be on the fire. <laughs> and it, we, we're we're a state that has four seasons pretty much all winter long, which is such an interesting part of the You know, because, yeah, you know, we used to go to Silver City a lot and we still every, we were there last year, too. And every time we get a chance to go there, we do. We love it because of the Gila, you know, National Forest and um, the cliff dwellings mm -hmm. and then the art community. And it's just it's growing. You know, it's 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 been awesome over the years to I think it was the first New Mexico community we started covering in the magazine and just watching it develop but keep its charm and I think you know when they say New Mexico true 
the state has done an excellent, excellent mm -hmm. job at keeping its authenticity of its culture, its heritage, its natural beauty. And I think that's always a fight for communities and states to have because, you know, you're your community has to be together to be able to make that happen politically. I'm not going to talk politics, but you know what I mean? It, it's something to keep who you are. And, you know, when you do go through the state, you know, driving up like from Silver City, going through all the art and all the public art into Albuquerque through the mountains, you know, all the natural areas, um, so and going all the way up to Taos. I mean, we did hit snow in Taos and we did, Nancy and I got ourselves twirled around because we didn't listen <laughs> about four wheel drive. I'm just saying, I, we had a good time. That and was we didn't, fun though. We, we, no, we, we stayed at Dream, Dreamcatcher Bed and Breakfast when we're up there. And it was, it was um, the end of it, early, early spring. And um, like end of February, I think we went up there and we went through the forest and it was snowy and beautiful and melting. And um, Nancy, yeah, you got us in trouble telling me to go down a road. I should <laughs> I'm like, oh, let's take this road. Look, it's so cool. And whoops. And we won't talk what happened to the undercarriage of the car. But anyway. Yeah. Oh, well. But we got out. Yeah. Well, we'll but, still have snow even into April. We've had a oh, snow yeah. in late April even. It's just that I know for here at the farm, we have flowers that start blooming the end of January. See, that's like Tucson, that because you guys are kind. Wow. No, you're not really, mm -hmm. but yeah, I mean, that's. I remember being in Gallup, New Mexico, in July, and we were staying at a um, an independent hotel, and I said to them, you know, it's really hot, and you know, is there a way to put like AC on or whatever? He goes, you're about to drop temperature. I'm like, what do you mean? I'm used to like, you know. It was July and it went down to like the 40s, 50s at night. And I'm like, how did that happen? Like, he's just like, open your window. I'm like, what do you mean? Just open the window, like just open the window. And it was really true. So it seems like, you know, it, it's just, I think you should just always have layers when you go to New Mexico, except for- Layers, are very, layers are very important year round, not just in the winter. Mm -hmm. The summer, yeah, especially. You might need a jacket in the morning, and then you might need a long sleeve shirt in uh, noontime, and then by three or four, you're going to be running yeah. around with a t-shirt. So layers are important all over New Mexico uh, mm. year round. Oh, well, that's cool. I wanted to bring up Christmas because when you are in New Mexico, you're asked, do you want red, green, or Christmas? Darlene, you want to say what this is? What am I talking about? Because we're talking about winter. It's a perfect time. It's, it's all year long. Yep. You go to a New Mexican restaurant and they will ask you, which do you want, red, green, or Christmas? And, and they're talking about the chili peppers. And so there are red peppers and they have their unique flavor. They're roasted a little differently. Then they have the green peppers. And, and, and then when they mix them together, that means you want a little bit of both sauces on there. And and it's a pretty, we have t-shirts. They sell t-shirts that say that. It's quite a popular slogan. Oh. And I think you see it a lot, even in gift shops, B&B's gift shops. And I know we have food, a canned food in our gift shop. And I know that we've been to your gift shop, Ryan, and, and those spoons, those amazing things your wife makes. Mm -hmm. And so have her put that on one of those spoons. There's a green spoon, a red spoon, and a Christmas spoon. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, she does some things with uh, with chilies and stuff. She's a silver jewelry artist, and we have a awesome. lot of her jewelry in the, in there. But we have uh, seed cards that are red chili and green chili seed cards that we sell here. Oh, and you, okay. can, you can send the card to people, and then they can plant it, and it's hatch green chilies. And, well, that's cool. uh, they're fun. But the big yeah. thing I see in town lately is, uh, are you team green or are you team red? And that that's yeah. all over shirts now. It's the big thing. And you even see the the Valentine Day heart shirts and it's one one half of it's green, one half of it's red and it's, it's a chili and they're really cute. They're selling at the shirt shops in town here. Oh, and that's nice. Are you team, which team are you on the top? And uh, they're really cool. Or are you I'm just on both teams. <laughs> you don't know which I'm one. a Christmas girl. I want them both because they both yeah, well, have yeah. their own True. Thing, if you, you know? talk to true true native new mexicans and that darlene can appreciate this she probably gets this too you you only you only i i like both depending on what i'm eating but uh they you know true new mexicans are either team green or team red and it's it's highly debated here and uh oh wow it, it's a it is definitely depending on the food chicken's got <laughs> Pork has got to have red. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, pozzoli. This is something oh, you have. Pozzoli. Is that pozzoli that we had the last time we were in Santa Fe with pork, and it had like a red sauce. Oh my god, oh, it's so good. And then like we had to move to the next stop. But I'm like that pozzoli. I haven't had that kind of 
toothiness deliciousness like since we lived in africa man. Really seriously good. Ooh, pasoli yeah. is that christmasy mm -hmm. is that a christmas thing or a year-round thing it's well, christmas it, but they do it year-round it's you know but you talk to uh, a mama from a from a generational family here and man they have that on the i swear it takes them two days to cook it the cook oh, wow they cook it to their exact way and every family has a little different tweak on their recipe and but they bring that the restaurants bring that the restaurants families bring that the restaurants because one unique thing about albuquerque and santa fe is we don't have a lot of chain and a lot of national restaurants it's mostly right. independent restaurants so mm -hmm. it's families recipes that they're bringing to these and nice see a pasoli at one restaurant in albuquerque and then you go to a, try a pasoli at one restaurant in taos or santa fe and it's totally different but it's amazing you know Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, nice. My though. daughter, she puts lime in hers, which is really delicious. Uh -huh. I think a lot of places do. And um, then my sister owns a brewery restaurant, Rio Bravo Brewing, and, and they their chef makes he's he's from the south and he makes an amazing pasola year round. He probably puts well, a is lot this is right? Albuquerque? <laughs> We yeah, missed a brewery while we were in Albuquerque. We did. It's an amazing brewery. I think I mentioned it before. Rio Bravo. Yeah. Well, we we're, we're coming. We're we'll be we'll be yeah, seeing come you. Back. <laughs> Listen, we have to go to Tucson next year, so you know we're coming through New Mexico. So we are like it's like okay, this is happening, you know. But, you know so there's you know the pozole, but then I know tamales were always a big deal around Christmas time in mm. Southern California and in Arizona. Uh, tamales got to be the same thing. It is. And then Ryan, does your dad make empanadas? No, he's a pretty much straight up baker. He'll make biscuitos. That's his, that's his, mm. his New Mexican thing. And he'll actually um, make um, biscotti with um, chilies in it. And he'll make biscotti with, he, he'll, he'll make some certain cookies. He makes the Italian wedding cookies, but he makes them the New Mexican way. Um, but uh, tamales, um, we make tamales, not not for our guests, because I think a tamale at breakfast might be a little weird, but <laughs> but um, we make tamales for ourselves. And it, it's a long whole day process because we make it to the traditional way. And um, tamales cool. are really important at Christmas uh, in Santa Fe. I don't know as much about how, how important they are in Albuquerque, but but yeah. they're um they're pretty if you go to someone's house for a christmas celebration there's going to be a pot of tamales there no doubt All about it. Yes. Mm. nice there, though the so tamale, i mean because that's the corn and that's all baked inside okay. right with the maize and mm -hmm. everything in there mm. man yeah, okay a, see this is what happens you get hungry this, this is and i i want to say that everyone january 6 is new mexico statehood day so that is a good mm. day i think it should be Nas national bisco cheeto day <laughs> <laughs> everyone should be making the cookies because yeah. no matter where you are in the world you can make the cookies and have a mm -hmm. taste of new mexico oh, right sure. and make sure you go to new mexico so i think new mexico january 6th everyone should just drive to new mexico <laughs> fly and drive in it should be like the national travel to new at, mexico at our city. new year's eve celebration on the plaza we um we give out biscuitos coffee and tea for free in town so oh, nice. kind of like nice. a celebration uh, in town that we do with tons and tons of fireworks that we shoot off of the uh, one of the hotels downtown and <laughs> they, they're the umbrella the uh, the botanical or the um, the basilica downtown and uh, mm -hmm. it's just it's beautiful and um, Taos does a similar uh, celebration uh, to and up there too where they do uh, they hand out um, biscuitos and coffee and tea and stuff like that mm, and you talk about the plaza what's the plaza like in because I know we've been to Taos we've been to Santa Fe mm -hmm. we've uh, Silver City doesn't. It has a downtown, not so much a plaza. But um, what about Albuquerque's plat? We've been there, and it's beautiful. And I can, and I remember it was in spring, and it was, you know, we went to dinner downtown. We walked from Botker Mansion, and it was all lit up. And I'm like, ooh, this is magical. Twinkly lights, mm -hmm. you know, and all of that. So the downtown has got to be um, like the plaza, Old Town Plaza, has got to be just. It is. Awesome. It, it's stunning. Now, Christmas Eve is specifically the luminarias, farlitos. Uh, you walk through Old Town, it will only be the bags with the candles in them. But one thing I think is really beautiful is Santa Fe's trees, the multicolored lights of the plaza in Santa Fe. It, it, and so the, the two plazas are really different. And but yet they're both so stunning and the way mm. they decorate and share. Um, so you really have to experience. We have our guests experience both. 
Um, mm-hmm. And they're staying here for a night and they're going to Santa Fe the next night. And they say, so if we've been to one, do we need to make time to go to the other? I said, yeah, you really yep. do. Because mm-hmm. It's almost like city mouse, country mouse in a way. <laughs> yeah. But there's a different flavor. Mm-hmm. There's a different feel. It's really a different experience in the two. Mm-hmm. I want to say too nice. about, you know, even when it's winter and it's chilly, it's a good time to go out and experience all the public art in these communities. And it, it's really a time also when leaves have fallen off trees that you can see out for miles as well. But you guys have amazing public art in Santa Fe and Albuquerque. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. And you, it's like a treasure hunt. And I can imagine also, you know, just with it being all pretty and with lights and everything, it's just got to be magic to go and experience all the public art in the it's winter. My and favorite thing to do it. Yeah, is the smell. Albuquerque, Santa Fe has the most magical smell in the winter time uh, because the seed is on. And do you burn that yeah. room? Oh yeah, we um it, we have a couple rooms of fireplaces, and we do um we burn we burn pinon in them, and then we have some outdoor fireplaces, and uh, we burn pinon uh, and uh, regular cedar, and wow. uh, and then downtown, you know, most of the most of the galleries and a lot of the hotels will burn pinon in their lobbies, so you got this nice smell of pinon here, and nice. Uh, it's it's just it is magical the lights that you know, they do the christmas tree lighting on the day after thanksgiving and it's just magical and uh it, it, be, it like the whole town just turns it's like oh now we're going to be this beautiful lit up town and we have lighting ordinances in santa fe well lighting ordinances don't don't apply dur- during the holidays because <laughs> we, we have all these lights we have all these beautiful you know different laser things during in some parts of the year and um and then we go back in january and we're, we're nice and dark because we want to protect our, our night sky again uh night sky is really important in santa fe uh anywhere you are because uh they want everybody to be able to see the night sky and appreciate the stars and everything but the, good just for the, the critters good for the critters it, for sure. <laughs> yes it, yes it is definitely good for the critters it protects them and uh but it's just it's just so beautiful with all the lights and it is magical and, and i've been to old town uh during christmas and it's just beautiful there it's it's just a different kind of beautiful people say do i need to go to taos and i'm like yes you need to go to taos sure the plaza is smaller but they just do some really cool things up there and it's same cool room, history las vegas kid carson is bur- buried right out there i mean here's the thing you got billy the kid in the south well he's all through <laughs> yeah. he went everywhere right fort sumner and then sumter sumner sumter oh, i'm gonna get sumner. it wrong yeah. but he's he's there and then you can go up you can see his house in silver city it's a like a replica i should say then you got him in Kit Carson outside the, the you know, I'm just like, here's all these. Well, you, you've got some outlaw. We, oh, we need to do an uh, outlaw show on the B&B show fair. here. That'd outlaws be cool. and bed and breakfast. That sounds good. <laughs> that sounds so Farolitos Fer- started with, with bank, a bank robbery. That's the, the That's story. Right. The story. And they started oh. all in pay from a bank robbery. So, wow. yes. Oh, my gosh. Burning they, money. <laughs> the the bank robber actually stole money from a bank. Um, I'm pretty sure it was the First National Bank of Santa Fe. Well, now another bank, but it was the First National Bank of Santa Fe. And he ran off into a cave and he lit the, he, he tried to uh, misdirect the people that were getting him. And he lit all these bags and they all had money in them from what oh. he stole. And he lit all these bags going into a cave to misdirect the people that were after him. And uh, that's really, that's like one of the myth, if you want to call it a myth, you know, we we don't know this 100% for sure, but it's really Mm. kind of cool that this, this, it's a really neat story. And that's how, that's how Farolitos came to be in luminarias as we know them in, in all parts of the country. So it's a uh, really kind of it is a bank robbery that would just happen, and that's how they tried to misdirect them, and they turned into a part of Christmas and part of the holiday culture. How funny! Celebration. That's, I think you know, that's why I thought of the ofrendas. I think because it was like a giving; it's an offering, and so I kind of went that way. But I had no idea it came from a stealing first. Yes. Well, we put them up. Christmas Eve, um, and maybe sometimes New Year's Eve, but pretty much our Christmas starts the day after Halloween. And so (laughs) from one colored light from orange to red and green. I mean, why not? I love it. I love it. Well, you know, it takes me literally two weeks almost to decorate. Um, It's such an extensive decorating. And so, yeah, early 
And, and we find a lot of people come and do their Christmas shopping in November. Uh -huh. And it really helps them. They like it. They get in the spirit of things. and they. Enjoy I always it. say that. Do your holiday shopping before. Don't do yeah. the Black Friday thing. Go on a yeah. vacation. <laughs> Have some fun. Soak up. Get, and then you can get gifts that aren't on Amazon. No offense to Amazon. Exactly. But like, come on. Let's let's get some authentic stuff. Get and some you know, real so, personal good yeah, stuff. Yeah, I mean, and there's yeah. there's booty things you can get, but um, everyone, thank you for joining us, uh, Ryan and Darlene. Mm -hmm. uh, great to have you on the show. So if you go to Santa Fe, go to bobcatin.com. If you go to Albuquerque, go to redhorsebnb.com. And of course, if you're going to New Mexico, you just really go to the website where you can see all the bed and breakfast and choose according to where you're staying. And hopefully when you go, you have a lot of time so you can do the whole state and go to all the B&Bs, right? So go to uh -huh. nmbba.org. Uh, that's the website for the New Mexico Bed and Breakfast Association. We are here. Every, is it every second Thursday here on Big Blend Radio talking about New Mexico, which means we're just really hungry every second Thursday <laughs> after this, and now we need to go back. So, thank you so much for joining us. It's been a real pleasure, and thank I am you. literally drooling and trying not to actually. I know I'm hungry camera. now. So, <laughs> thank you for having us. Thanks yep. so much. Mm -hmm. Bye. Gracious hosts unique lodging, and tasty cuisine. New Mexico bed and breakfasts are New Mexico true. Our innkeepers are as special as New Mexico, and we're sharing their stories. Read about them and plan your trip at nmbba.org.